Welcome to the final part of the advanced cloud leaderboard tutorial, despite what it says in the background. Uh, where we left the last session, we were displaying the leaderboard, it was scrolling up, it was scrolling down, it was looking very nice. In this session, we're just going to round off the edges, make it neater, improve it, and put the finishing touches to it. We'll start the process by adding a pause state so that instead of just bouncing around, the leaderboard will actually pause at the top or the bottom. So let's go to the high score sprite and start there. So over here again, underneath my update state, I'm going to add a new custom block right down here. So make a block. I'm going to call it set pause state with post state. Set pause state with post state. If you remember, I did actually create a variable called post post pause state earlier. So add an input, post state, and this is going to be the state I want it to move into after the pause. So if it's at the top, it might go into a pause state and then want to move into a go to bottom afterwards. Add a label after seconds, so I know how long I want it to pause, and I'll call that parameter seconds. And this is going to set state and set post pause state. So I need two sets state and post pause state. State is going to be pause and post state is going to be whatever I passed in. And how long are we going to wait for? I could use the timer for this, but what if the game is using the timer for something else? I don't really want to use a timer. I'm going to make another custom block called set pause length. So set pause length. And that's going to add an input of seconds. And I'll call set pause length from here with the number of seconds passed in. And I'm actually going to use the system clock rather than the timer for this pause. So let's make another variable and let's call it a pause target. Let's make a variable called pause target for this sprite only. And this, as I say, we're going to use, instead of timer, we're going to use days since 2000, as we can't change that value. That doesn't matter what we do to that, it's not going to affect the game, but resetting the timer might if the game is using it for something else. So we're going to set the pause target, and it's going to require a little bit of calculation here, because Days since 2000 works in days rather than seconds. So the pause target is going to be days since 2000 plus however long we want to wait. So days since 2000. So now we need to work out seconds in terms of days, which is going to be the number of seconds. So I'll drag that down divided by a couple of multiplies. So how many hours in a day? 24. How many minutes in an hour? 60. How many seconds in a minute? 60. So that will set a value for when we want to unpause. Now let's have a look at the next state where it was changing state. Instead of setting the scroll straight, Set, that's a tongue twister. Setting that scrolling state to go to top. We're now going to use my new block, which is set pause state. And the pause, post state is going to be go to top. And we'll do that after, let's say, three seconds. So after three seconds, it will start scrolling to the top. And similarly, put in there, if I'm already at the top, we want to go to the bottom after three seconds. And if you recall in update state, we left that area for pause blank. And in there, we're going to see if we've finished pausing. So if 
the days since 2000 to the sensing block if that is bigger than pause target then we've reached the end of the pause and we want to set the state to the next state so we'll set our scrolling state to the post pause state so now it should scroll to the top pause scroll to the bottom pause I'm going to reset the high score data to see if that's why we were getting a bit of unexpected text. So let's see if I'm actually right into the cloud properly. Over here in update cloud, so setting one to one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, six, that's not right, five, five, six to six, and obviously we need to do the seventh as well. So that's where the problem is coming in. And I'm pretty sure, confident that will have fixed it, so I will uh, check that out later. But I think it's now time to actually add our more advanced game to this project, which is simply done by setting in the game sprite, setting basic game to false. So if I now go to a full screen, Execute this. It's waiting for me to play and it's scrolling the score so I press the mouse. The high scores have vanished but what I really want to happen is to continue showing the high scores while the game is playing. And that's very easy with this system. All I need to do is go into the game code and make sure that it's updating the display every frame. So let's have a quick scan through. Now I know I can remove this arrays all from there now because I don't need that anymore. Looking further down, wait to play is already updating the high scores every time. So there's nothing these changing there. In the next column, better game. This is calling update game display every frame. So if I move it over to update game display and I add a broadcast at the beginning of there, which says show high scores then let's see how well that works let's set that going let's tap the mouse to start and all this game is doing is picking a random number but in a fun kind of way and so when the numbers stop that's the number that it's going to try and put on the high score and it says I'm a winner the high scores have stopped scrolling at this point so that's interesting. Let's have a look for why that might be. We go into the game code and we look down here for where it says it's changing the costume to winner or loser and in this loop it's not updating the high score table. So let's have it updating, high, showing high scores in there. And let's reset the high scores Go full screen and start it afresh. Tap mouse to start, tap mouse to slow them down. Good score, 88,000. That's going to be right at the top. And while it's displaying winner, it's carrying on scrolling this time. So I might as well have another game while I'm waiting for it to go to the top. 54,000, good, but it's not good enough. Can I squeeze another quick game in? And when it gets to the top, hopefully, I'll be there. And there it is. So now in the front end while we're playing it's showing the high score table, the high score table's updating. It's really a nice system. And you can control how many it shows, the speed it scrolls out, you can control all of that yourself. But there are a few things we can do to make this even better. I'm going to add two new states to the game. So over in initialize, where we've got go to bottom, go to top and pause, I'm going to create two new variables. One is go to username for this sprite only, and the other is track username for this sprite only. And I'll need to initialize these over here with unique numbers. 
So we'll have go to username will be number three and track username will be number four. Now go to username will be a nice way that we can start at the top of the high score table, scroll down to the actual user playing it if he's in there, pause for a bit and then scroll to the bottom. Track username is one for actually while you're playing the game where it can always concentrate on your score. So if your score starts moving up the high score table, it will continue tracking it. So let's add these into the code. In update state, we're going to need to add a little bit of code in here that says if state, so I'll duplicate that bit and put it across, and if it's track username, then I need to find the username position in the table if there is one, and I need to make sure I'm always targeting that. So we're going to add a custom block, which I'll put at the bottom here. I'll call it get username position. So this will scan through and see if the username has actually got a score in the table. I'm going to set it to run without screen refresh because it will have a loop in it. So let's put it down here and we're going to make it a variable called username position for this sprite only. And we're going to start, we're going to scan through the table, through the high score table using this as an index. So we'll set it to one at the beginning. So we'll set username position to one. And then we'll repeat for every entry in the high score table, which is high score number. And we'll check to see whether this entry is the current user or not. So we'll just have a if and an equals. And if item username position of high score names equals username, then yes, we are in there. So we'll just drop out because the high score number, I mean, the username position is actually indexing where we are in the table. So we'll just stop this script. Otherwise, we'll move on to the next entry in the high score table. So change username position by one. And if at the bottom we've gone through all of the usernames and we haven't found an entry, then we're going to set username position to zero, and that will indicate that you are not in the high score table. So back up to the code I was changing for update state. We need to get the username's position and then check whether or not he's in the high score table. So if else, if username position equals zero, then we know he's not actually in there. So username position equals zero then we'll set the target index to the bottom of the high score table because that's where you're going to appear if you, if you get under the high score table. So set target index to high score number, very bottom of the table. But if you are on the table, then we're going to set it to username position, which is where the player is. So that's nice. Let's put that in just underneath the else and above the if. We'll put that in there. And then we need to make a slight change. I'm just going to neaten this code up a little bit. I'm going to need to make a slight change here because if the current index, if it's if it's scrolled to the correct place, it's saying go into the next state. But if we're actually tracking the username during the game, we don't want it to go to a different state. We want it to stay tracking. So I'll just make sure it's not tracking. So around that I'll put if not equals and that will be if not state equals track username so that's updated there. 
in the next state code it's going to be slightly different because if you've reached the top of the list on the way down it'd be nice to pause at the user's name if he's in there so we'll have to get the username's position and then another if else and again I'm just going to tidy up the code a little bit if the username's not in the high score table so if the username position is zero then we will just go straight to the bottom but if he is in there what we're going to do is we're going to go to the username after the three seconds and then we need to add one more conditional in the next state because now he might be at the state of go to username so if he's at the state of go to username and he's reached the username his next state is going to be to go to the bottom so we'll use a pause again so we'll pause at the username for three seconds and then go to the bottom one more thing that would be nice to do is in this show high scores would be to emphasize it if you're actually looking at the uh, current user's name in the high score table so let's do a check for that so it'll be an if else and it'll be an equals and we're looking at the current high score that it's displaying which is their item index of high score names if that equals the username then we want to emphasize it so let's add buffered text and this time we're going to change the text to brightness so we'll use text brightness and bring it across there if it's a username we'll show it at full brightness and if it's not the user's name we show it at half brightness and we'll put that in right at the beginning there and to be able to test this I want my username to be somewhere in the middle of the scores so to make that more likely to happen when I'm initializing the scores I'm going to set that to 199 and change it by 199 on each score reinitialize it and you'll see the difference in the high score table now so it goes all the way well as the scores can go 10 times bigger than that I think I think we'll adjust that a little bit more so I'll go back to the initialize code do -de do and instead of times 199 let's add a zero to the end of that let's add a zero to the end it's changing by initialize the high scores again let's have a look now let's try and get a score somewhere in the middle of the table So it's going to go <laughs> try and get one slightly higher because it's going to go all the way to the bottom of the scores oh and that is interesting it started my score with the number zero i don't want the score to start with number zero so i'll look at that in a moment can i score any higher than forty thousand? it's at the top so it's going to start scrolling down any second so let's see if it will stop on my name now there it is, there's my name highlighted nicely. It's gone straight past it. So something's not quite working, but at least the highlighting is working well. Did I add the code to set scrolling state? Let's have a quick check. Next state, pause state, get username, update state, set scrolling state, got go to bottom, go to top. I haven't got the other two states in there. So I need to check if it's going to use a name 
and I also need to add an if in there to check if it's tracking username. If it's going to the username, then I'd need to set the target index to the username position. And if it's tracking the username, all I want to do is make the scroll speed faster. So it's setting scroll speed to 0.1 normally. Just duplicate that and get rid of the rest. If it's actually tracking, then I want to set the scroll speed faster so that it will zoom in on my name even quicker. And let's add a couple of receivers into the high scores so we can go between the state where it's going from the top to the bottom, to the top, and the state where it's tracking the user, so you can easily change it for what you want to happen. So when I receive, we're going to call this show scrolling high scores. Show scrolling high scores. If I receive that, then I need to set the scrolling state to go to top. And another receiver for the tracking user state, which is often a good one to have actually in the game itself. So let's we'll call this show user high score. And we'll set the scrolling state to track username. And in the game, we know it's starting on a show scrolling high scores because that's how we've set it up. But after, in the game, after you started the game, so when you first start, it's going to show the scores moving up and down and up and down. But once you've done that and you've started the first game, let's move it on so it tracks the user. So once I've started the first game, we'll just set it to show user high score. So from that point on, it will track the user in the high score table. Let's see how that works. So I've already got a score in that, so it should scroll down. To my score. There it is. And then it should carry on scrolling towards the bottom. Perfect. And once I've started the game it should... There we are. Now if I can score higher, there's no guarantee. Or oh, just! <laughs> it's still tracking me and I've managed to get a higher score in exactly the same point on the high score table. This may take a while. I'm gonna beat that score. Not that time. Maybe this time. No, not this. This may take. This may pad the tutorial out by another half hour. Let's have a go there. Yes, we've got a new high score. Will it? Yes, and it tracks straight to the high score. So that makes a really nice interactive high score feature that you can be showing while the game is playing. Now I noted from before that when I scored a score that began with zero. It was actually storing that zero in the high score table. That's to do with the actual game code here. And if I look across at where it says set score, it's making a string. If I, if I just add a little bit to ensure it's number, it will get rid of any leading zeros. So we're going to set score to, we're going to use the round function. Set score to round of score. And that will, that will strip away any zeros at the beginning. Let's go back to the high scores. The only other thing I think we need is because you might be displaying this actually while the game is playing, we don't want we want as little overhead as possible. We don't want to be displaying the scores and wipe it out, re-displaying it if nothing has changed. So we're going to use something called a dirty flag which tells us if the display has changed. So let's set up the variable which I will call dirty with the question marks. True or false? True if I need to redraw, false if not. First I'm going to add a receiver called set dirty, or dirty high scores even better. So when I receive, and it's a new one, dirty high scores, then we will set our new variable 
to true. We're not actually going to use that in this demonstration, but if at some point in your own game you want to force it to redraw the high score table, then you'll just have, just call this broadcast and it will set the dirty flag so the next time it displays it, it will actually do a full display. Now this is where the dirty flag is used, is in show high scores or rather just up here so we'll update the state we always want to do that but we only need to show the high scores if we know something has changed and this, this is important you don't want to waste time doing a lot of pen drawing in the middle of a game for no reason whatsoever so we we'll only show the scores if dirty is true and we know immediately after we've shown the high scores at that point we know that dirty is false because it is showing the most recent high scores. So there we can say dirty is false. If we've just scrolled the high scores, which will be in update state, so if you've gone through here and you've actually changed it, then there we need to set dirty to true. And likewise in the one below. So if we've changed the current index then we know that the display has changed and similarly just below it if we've changed the current index the display has changed. Now when we first initialize the game which is up here when we first initialized it we want the dirty flag to be true so that we definitely draw it the first time so set dirty to true. If we've updated the high scores over here, then we know that we've read scores from the cloud, so we don't know if the display needs updating or not. So we're going to force it to say, yes, it does. So update high scores, so make dirty true. But the problem with this is that we're calling that function all the time during the gameplay as well, so that will be setting the dirty flag to true every single frame. Now during the gameplay itself, we don't want to be reading or writing to the cloud. We just want to use the scores we've already got. And then when we finish the game, we'll check it against the scores that are actually in the cloud and write it to the cloud. So for that reason, I'm going to add another very similar function to update high scores but I'm going to call it update high scores mid game. And so that will call the update high scores. But what I'm going to do is in update high scores, it's actually calling decode there. I'm going to take it out of there so it doesn't always read the new values from the high score table and I'm going to put that decode high scores up here at the beginning of update high scores so it loads the values from the cloud and updates them but when you're actually mid-game I'm not going to load the values from the cloud and I'm not going to encode them what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the dirty flag I'm going to set it to the value of the updated variable and in case you can't remember back to what the updated variable was that is set to true if and only if you've registered somewhere new on the high score table either beating your old score or set a new score on there so now we have a dirty flag that works but I need to ensure that I use update high scores mid game during the actual gameplay now in this particular demo there's no real use for that because there's nothing happening. But if you consider a game such as a racing game where you're doing a full lap of the track and you're overtaking cars and you might be moving up, scoring more as you play through the game, then you'd want to be calling update high scores mid-game every time you've updated your score. In this particular demo, we only set the score when we finish the game. So it has no use, no use here, but in your own games, Calling either will work, but calling update high scores mid-game while you're actually in the middle of the game will be quicker, it won't redraw everything as often, and it won't be setting your score into the cloud until you've finished the game. So let's have one final look at this. 
In fact, no, before I do that, I'll set the initialization code back so that it's multiplied by 100 and change it by minus 100 there. Reset the high scores and that should be the end. Oh no, one more thing. Go to the thumbnail, go into costumes and select the other thumbnail. You can delete the basic one if you want, that's up to you. But this is definitely the advanced cloud leaderboard, the end of the tutorial. So let's give it one final go. When I start, it will show the high scores and it will scroll all the way down. If it sees my name, it will pause at it, get to the bottom and go to the top. But as soon as I press to start a game, it will track me. At the moment, I'm not even on the high score table. And my very first score will get me on there and it gets me on right at the top and it's tracked me straight to the top. So from this point on in this demo, it will just track rock coder. I'm not going to move out of first place. I can't move down, so it will make no difference now. But in a game where lots of other people are playing, then you'll be able to see if you move up or down the table as you progress. So you now have a way of showing your high score table. You can score, store as many names and scores as you wish. You can display them how you want. You can have the table scrolling up and down or tracking the player. You can show them in your front end, you can show it during the game. So it's a very versatile system. And hopefully you've enjoyed making the system and have enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, don't forget to follow Rock Coder on YouTube. And I'll see you next time.